All right, in this lesson here, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the viewports inside of Unreal Ed. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that when you fire up the software, you've got four different viewports. Right now, we've got a top viewport, a front viewport, a side viewport, and a perspective viewport. Now, the difference between these different viewport types, the front, top, and side viewports are what are known as orthographic viewports. These are flat views. They're non-objective. In other words, our wireframes do not distort inside these views. And when I say distort, what I'm talking about is, you know, if you were to go out and actually stand on a railroad track that goes on and on and on forever, you'll actually see the two rails come to a point off in the distance. And this is what we would actually see in our perspective view as well. This is a distortion that's occurring. Now, on these orthographic views, again, the top, front, and side views, we don't get that distortion. Everything stays non-objective, which is very handy. Plus, it is, you know, not to be very simple about this, but it actually is a view of the top of your map, a view of the front of your map. You get the idea. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and spend just a second, Logan, and talk about some viewport navigation. Now, I know we did, you know, cover some of the basics of it in the last lesson. But I feel it's uh, pretty important to cover it in this lesson in case anybody actually skipped the last one. And, you know, viewport navigation obviously belongs in the viewports lesson. All right. Okay, so starting with the perspective view. If you simply want to look around your view, you can hold the right mouse button and drag the mouse around. And it's basically like standing still and looking around your map. If you want to look around and kind of inspect things. Exactly. Okay, so if I want to actually move forwards or backwards now, what would I need to do? Hold the left mouse button and drag up and down, and you'll actually move the camera forwards and backwards. You still have left and right for turning the camera. So I could actually use the left mouse button then, and then by just pushing my mouse around, I could actually walk through a level if that level was just on, let's just say, one level. In other words, a plane, basically. All right, you could just walk around a flat floor, uh, floor basically, and okay, look very around. Cool. All right, so then what happens if I actually need to go up and down between a multi-level type map? Well, you could pan by using both mouse buttons and dragging up or down, left or right. And in this case, uh, both of these movements will physically move the camera around. Okay, very cool. So this is perspective navigation. How is there any difference when we go to an orthographic view? Is the navigation any different there? Uh, it's similar. It's just a little bit simpler because you have one less one less axis to deal with. Okay. If you want to simply pan around an orthographic view, hold the left mouse button and drag, and you can pan around your view. To zoom, you use both mouse buttons, and then you can zoom in or out. Oh, very nice. Okay, so now the next thing I'd like to go ahead and do is point out this camera. Logan keeps talking about how we're moving our camera around, and you can actually see our perspective camera right now. He's moving his mouse over it, as a matter of fact. It's an eye icon with a red arrow, and that red arrow just happens to be showing us the way that we're looking at the moment. And what this will do is lead us into the first icon in the discussion of all of the icons available up on the toolbar at the top of each of our viewports. Right there, we've got real-time playback. Go ahead and talk about that, Logan. Well, real-time preview will make sure that the editor keeps updating this view, even if it's not active. Also, if there's anything that would be moving in the view, it'll constantly update without you having to interact with it. An easy way to demonstrate this right now by leaving it off by default, if you go back down to your perspective view and, let's say, look the other way, I'll turn around real quick. Now, take a look at the camera, the eye icon again. The arrow is still pointing back towards our player start and weapon base. Now, the moment he clicks in that view, look at that. It updated. Now, if he goes up and he turns the real-time preview on and now goes back down and moves around, watch what happens. Ah, we see that the arrow is now actually updating. And if he moves forward, look at this. The whole camera is moving now. Exactly. So now it's basically just keeping that view in a constant draw mode. This is also useful in your perspective view if you want to take a look at an animated texture. It's also useful if you're moving a brush or other object in one view but want to see how it's looking in a different view. You can toggle the real-time preview on and then keep it keep an eye on what's moving from multiple views. And we'll be using this later on, I'm sure, when we get into the advanced level design lesson of this VTM. Okay, so we'll go ahead and turn that off. I'll, I will, you know, go ahead and take the time to mention the fact that if you've got these things turned on, it can really start to slow things down when you start getting into a very complicated level. All right, next we've got three icons located next to the little joystick. We've got a T, F, and S. And this basically just stands for our top, front, and side viewport. And you'll notice that each of our orthographic views right now have the appropriate icon lit up, lit up for that view. In other words, right now, we've got a top view, and you can see that the T has been highlighted right now. And over in the front view, the F has actually been highlighted. Okay, so you can see that as we click on these icons, we can now easily change to a different view. Simple enough. And if we go down to our perspective view, we can also change that into one of the orthographic views as well. 
Now, to get our perspective view back, that brings us over to all of these icons over here. And basically, all of these icons will take us into a perspective view, but they all represent a different draw mode, if you will. And we're not going to talk about all of them right now. They're not necessarily going to be relevant in what we're doing. Some of them will become more important as we get involved with more complex levels. But, Logan, go ahead and take a second and talk about some of the important ones. Okay. First, you have the ability to draw the perspective in a wireframe. This is very useful if you need to see exactly where brushes are and need to see where they are in a 3D view. So you could zoom in and like look around certain brushes in a perspective wireframe. It could also be really handy if you're hunting for something in a very complex level and you can't see through all of the walls. Right. Okay. So moving over a few, you have the textured view. And that is showing even if you've rebuilt lighting and have light maps, it will still show the textures without light maps. This would be useful if you're trying to align textures in like a dark area of a map. Exactly. Went over from that, we have 